Samsung Galaxy S10 is actually coming out in just a few months and this is going to be a quite the interesting device. I mean, Samsung has introduced their Infinity Design back in 2017 with the Galaxy S8 and then they've refined that in 2018 with the Galaxy Note 8. Well, the Note 8 actually came out in 2017, but uh, this year with the S9, the Note 9, and next year Samsung would finally introduce a brand new design and that would be the Samsung Galaxy S10. So get that popcorn ready, sit back, relax, subscribe and also hit the notification bell if you're new to the channel and you want to see more videos like this one and here's everything you need to know about Samsung's next big phone for 2018, the Samsung Galaxy S10. Okay, so design-wise, we know that Samsung is working on a brand new design for the Galaxy S10. This is because the S9 didn't, for example, didn't do so well when it came to sales. Uh, and a possible reason for this could be a very similar design to the S8 from a year before. And we've actually had many reports that Samsung would be redesigning the S10 and yes, I know, uh, a lot of you want to see the S10 with that foldable, flexible design. So essentially that foldable smartphone design that unfolds into a larger tablet when you need it uh, and folds back into a more portable smartphone when you need something that's more portable. Uh, but that would be the Galaxy X. So Samsung is working on such a phone. I've done multiple videos on that, the Galaxy X. So feel free to check those videos out. But the Galaxy S10 won't be the Galaxy X. Those are two different phones. Uh, and by the way, the Galaxy X would also be launching, according to most reports, next year in 2019 as well. And in terms of the S10's design, honestly, there's not a lot that Samsung could change. I mean, the S8 already had almost zero bezels on the sides, thanks to those curved edges. Only the top and bottom bezels were visible. And then the S9 had even thinner bezels on the top and the bottom. I mean, when it comes to the S10's design, there are only two things that Samsung could improve on. And of course, that those are the top and the bottom bezels. So the bottom one, for example, it could be removed entirely by bending the display underneath the front glass, basically the same technique that Apple has applied for the iPhone X in order to achieve that bezel-less chin. And by the way, Apple's actually the only manufacturer that managed to do that, mostly because of how expensive and how difficult it is to do such a thing. And in terms of the top bezels, Samsung could either add a notch, which, let's be honest, they, they won't be doing that because, well, it won't be the smartest move to do, especially since they've been trolling Apple like crazy in their new ingenious ads. Also, Samsung's literally the only big smartphone manufacturer now that does not have a notch, and I fully respect that. So they could either have a very interesting design like the Oppo Find X with that raisable camera module on the top, or actually the raisable frame, that would be really cool to have, but they probably won't be doing that. Um, or they could try to keep the sensors uh, the same place and just try to make the top bezel as thin as they possibly can. And this is what I think that Samsung would be doing. Uh, this is the Zone of Tech Samsung Galaxy S10 concept, and this is fully based on what Samsung would most likely end up doing next year with the Samsung Galaxy S10. And we even had a Samsung patent that was posted on mobile Copen uh, that showed a device with no bezels on the bottom and just a very, very thin one on the top. And then the Galaxy S10's codename is allegedly Beyond, and Ice Universe actually posted this image on Twitter back at the end of June. This may be a design Beyond, showing something that resembles what, uh, you know, that pattern from Mobile Copen that I showed you before. Now, I personally don't think that a top bezel would be this thin. Now, of course, that it would be awesome if it was this thin. Uh, but I would put my money on something similar to what I've showed you in the concept. So basically, no bottom bezel and a really, really thin top bezel, and that's pretty much it. So overall, if you think about it, we, we got to a point where manufacturers are basically killing the bezels, which is great, but at some point in the not too distant future, literally every single smartphone would look the same from the front with that all screen design. Um, the only difference would actually be on the back, but even in that case, well, there's not that much that we can do with that anyway. And then the screen to body ratio is said to be around 93% which would be a considerable jump from the 84.2, I think, which is what we had on the S9 Plus. So yeah, the bezels are definitely getting thinner on the Galaxy S10. And then according to Korean Debel website and many other inside sources, Samsung would actually be including an in-display fingerprint reader finally on the Galaxy S10. So this was initially expected to come with the S8, then the Note 8, then the S9, and then the Note 9, but we, we still don't have it yet. Apparently, Samsung's been working with Qualcomm on designing an ultrasonic fingerprint reader this would be awesome to have, it sounds cool, but the thing is, this thing already exists. Vivo has already done this. Uh, same goes for Huawei and a few more, so it's nothing, it's nothing that new. I'm really not sure why Samsung kept postponing this, probably because of manufacturing issues 
But still, it's Samsung, you know, they have a ton of money, a lot of production power, so they can do pretty much anything they want. It's just, you know, cutting down the costs and, you know, selling a product for a consumer that the consumer will actually buy for that specific price point. And then according to the Bell and Electronic Times as well, the SN would actually come in two models, a 5.8 inch as well as a 6.2 inch model, essentially the exact same sizes as the S9 and the S9 Plus or the S8 and the S8 Plus which would mean that Samsung would only make the body smaller and overall they would be easier to use with one hand rather than making the display larger again. And then this also means that Samsung actually plans on keeping the Note lineup, which at the moment, I mean, the Note 9 comes with a 6.4 inch display and it was rumored that the Note 9 would actually be Samsung's last Galaxy Note phone, but it seems like this won't really happen, um, at least when it comes to the larger display. So Samsung will plan on releasing a larger display, new larger display device in 2019. And I don't know, I do agree that having the S series released around April and then the Note series released around August, literally just four months later, is quite infuriating. I mean, you buy your flagship Samsung device only to be replaced by one that's better just four months after. And then same applies to the Note. You know, you get the Note because it's better than the, the previous Galaxy S, but just six to seven months after, the S10 would come out with a fairly noticeable improvement over something like the Galaxy Note 9. So in my opinion, Samsung should really just release both at the same time, the S10 and then the Note 10 instead of the S10 Plus. And the Note would come with the larger display, among with the S Pen and a few extra features, and they could even call this the S10 Pro. And I can bet that the S10 Pro would sell better than the Note 10. But yeah, let me know in the comments what do you guys think about all this, uh, if you have a Note, if you have a Galaxy S, and what do you think about those two releases uh, so close to one another. Now, in terms of other improvements, apart from thinner bezels, uh, an in-display fingerprint reader, Samsung seems to be considering adding a triple lens camera system to the Galaxy S10, so very similar to what Huawei has done with a P20 Pro. So the third module could be used for either improving low-light performance, or it could be used for even better optical zoom, uh, 5x for example, or possibly even more than that. And every year, by the way, I keep saying, please Samsung, please add a 4K display to your smartphones. That would make a huge impact, a huge difference in VR, especially since, you know, you already sell a first party VR headset, the Gear VR, which is, by the way, the best mobile headset you can buy right now. But I've been saying this ever since the S8 came out. And so far, we have zero reports confirming that a 4K display is coming to the S10. So probably won't happen this year either. I mean, in 2019. Uh, but we do have some reports on something really cool that Samsung might be adding to the S10. So this patent has actually been discovered a few days ago. It was filed by Samsung in February 2018, and it actually shows a self-healing display. So essentially a display that can actually repair and remove scratches by itself. It sounds crazy, it sounds like science fiction, but it's actually not. So did you know that LG has introduced the LG G Flex in 2013? You remember that phone? That was a flexible smartphone. That was really cool. That was five years ago in 2013, but that was the first smartphone with a self-healing back. Not a front, so the, the display wasn't healed, uh, but the back was self-healing. Whether or not this will come with the S10? Um, maybe. So the patent was actually filed in February. So essentially a full year before the S10 would be announced. I would say that there's actually a strong possibility, a strong chance that we'll see this in the Galaxy S10. And then uh, Samsung has also partnered with a company called Mantis Vision to create a new 3D depth sensing camera system with facial recognition for the Galaxy S10. Now, I don't really have a problem with the iris scanner on the S9. I think it's really fast and it's far more secure than just the front camera, the front camera unlock than most, that most Android smartphones actually use right now. Uh, so the in-display fingerprint reader would actually be an even bigger new feature than the 3D depth sensing camera would be on the S10. Uh, and then let's talk about the battery size. So the battery size, uh, would also be increased by quite a bit on the S10. We don't really have actual numbers, but currently the S9 Plus comes with a 3500 mAh battery, which is pretty good. Uh, but the Note 9 actually comes with a 700 mAh increase over the Note 8, so from 3300 mAh to 4000 mAh, which is crazy. So do you expect the S10 to get at least 3800 mAh or so? And a big question. The big question is, Will the headphone jack be removed, finally? Well, I don't know, it, it, it's a bit of a weird one. So just like Apple's notch, Samsung has been trolling Apple as well as Google for removing the headphone jack. And in many ways, I, I agree, not with the trolling, but with Apple and Google removing the headphone jack. So the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack was designed, did you know, fun fact, in the 1950s? Yes, 68, 68 years ago which is crazy. So it's an analog connector, which honestly I could make a separate video about. I have so many things to say about this, but I'm not going to go into too much detail. Uh, they, the idea is that this is a thing of the past. It's limited by the fact that it's an analog connector. It cannot really communicate with the device that well. 
Uh, and by not removing it, Samsung is just keeping us away from progress. So here's the thing, if Samsung removed the headphone jack and pretty much every other manufacturer that still uses it, well, manufacturers that make headphones, they would be making more Bluetooth headphones with better battery life, better sound quality, and overall cheaper, uh, lower prices, essentially. So, you know, it's, it's a win-win for everyone. But yeah, this was a really interesting video to make. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the Galaxy S10. Do you think it would be worth it over the S9 uh, or even the Note 9? Do you think, you know, the slightly larger display, the thinner bezels, obviously the improved camera with three modules, do you think that's overall worth it? Or would you say that, oh, smartphones look pretty much the same as they did two years ago? So we haven't received any changes, especially when it comes to Samsung phones. You know, the S8 already came with that Infinity design, which was awesome. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. Also, don't forget to join the zone. So this is something new. Essentially, by supporting the channel, you can do that by uh, tapping on the join button or the first link in the description if you don't see the join button and you get access to your private live stream every month for me. You can ask me, we can ask me questions. Uh, we'll do a live Q&A and it's going to be fun. Uh, and you also get some unique badges that you can use in the comments, in the live stream. And these badges actually evolve over time the longer you've been a member for. So that's pretty cool. Join the zone, become a member, support the channel, and get access to some exclusive features. And also subscribe and notifications if you're new to the channel and you want to see more leaks and rumors like this one, tap that bell so that you get notified as soon as a new video comes out. But yeah, this was, again, a really interesting video to make. Thank you for watching. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next video. This is it Tech, signing out. Cheers.